In this video I want to show you 8 ways to slow aging naturally. Before we start I want to make sure that we are on the same page. Becoming really old but being bedridden or in pain for the past 20 years has absolutely no appeal to me. After all, the risk of developing most modern diseases increases exponentially with age. So the aim of this video is to provide you with the knowledge to become as old as possible but still be able to enjoy your life, to increase your health span, not simply your lifespan. To give you an example, my personal goal is to be able to do water skiing at the age of 100. Now let's judge every advice given in this video based on this idea, alright? Ok, the first way to slow down aging is exercise. A meta-analysis found that all-cause mortality is decreased by about 35% in physical active compared to inactive subjects. One way how exercise prolongs life is because it stimulates the expression of different longevity genes. Exercise will also protect our muscles. After the age of 30, we lose about 5% of muscle mass every decade. Besides the fact that we need muscles to do water skiing, they will also keep us alive longer. Muscles help to prevent falling and bone fractures, which are common among older people. Here's a shocking fact. 16.6% .6 of people above the age of 65 who undergo hip surgery due to falling die within just one year. Even if, for whatever crazy reason, water ski is not your old age goal, just think for a moment about how your 100th birthday should look like. Going on a walk on a sunny day. Play with your grandchildren. Maybe even lift them up. Before you say, that is impossible, have a look at these centenarians competing in sprints. The next method to extend your health span is dietary restriction. Now you have probably heard that calorie restriction increases lifespan, but the truth is that calorie restriction is only one method of dietary restriction. Fasting or time restricted feeding and micronutrient restrictions are other two common methods and it is important that we understand the differences and that we understand what likely works and what likely doesn't work. A quick glance at the scientific literature may leave you with the impression that calorie restriction is the way to go. Which is certainly true if you are a model organism. But there is a good reason to doubt that this works in humans. Obviously we haven't tested it in humans because we simply live too long. But we have tested it in monkeys, which are much closer related to us than mice. Two studies were run in parallel. One showed a lifespan extension with calorie restriction. The other didn't. What is going on? Calorie restriction only showed a lifespan extension when it was combined with time restricted feeding and when the animals were fed the equivalent of a super sized meat diet. So when your diet is crap, you better eat less of it. But if your diet is fairly natural, well, calorie restriction seems to have no benefit. There's even reason to believe that constant calorie restriction may not only be ineffective, but also detrimental. During the notorious Minnesota starvation experiment, 36 men were fed only 1500 calories for 6 months, mostly coming from carbohydrate rich sources such as potatoes, bread or macaroni. The results were massive muscle wasting, depression and hysteria. One subject even amputated three fingers of his hand with an axe, though the subject wasn't sure if he has done so intentionally or accidentally. In contrast to calorie restriction, intermittent fasting seems to be well tolerated in humans and induces longevity benefits in animal models. However, I want to emphasize intermittent here. Many health benefits of fasting, such as stem cell regeneration, often come during the refeeding time. Fasting also induces autophagy, which stands for self-eating, and is a process where cells clean up and recycle their cellular junk, which makes them run more efficiently again. Activation of autophagy extends the lifespan of animal models. Unfortunately, we cannot measure autophagy in humans yet. Ok, let's look at macronutrient restrictions. Ketogenic diets are currently tested to extend the life and health span of animal models and show promising results. John Ramsey, senior author of the study, told UC Davis that he was impressed by the magnitude of effect they observed. A 13% increase in median lifespan for the mice on a high fat versus a high carb diet. In humans, that would be 7 to 10 years. 
Now as far as we know there are no centenarian populations which follow a ketogenic diet, but there may be some similarities. We will come back to this in a moment. However, considering that the body mass index is a good indicator for health span, fasting and low carb diets may help to shed some unnecessary body fat. Another benefit of weight loss is that it reduces inflammation. Inflammation is at the root of many diseases. And during aging, chronic, sterile, low-grade inflammation develops. Researchers nowadays call it inflammaging. On top of being the main driver of age-related diseases, chronic inflammation affects your mood and causes joint pain. Two things we want to avoid if we want to enjoy our water skiing later in life. Now researchers from the UCLA looked at different blood markers associated with epigenetic aging, which is nowadays the most precise method to predict somebody's biological age. And the researchers found that the blood concentration of the C-reactive protein, a marker for inflammation, was strongly associated with aging. Fish consumption on the other hand was associated with slower aging, probably because of the anti-inflammatory effects of omega-3 fatty acids. I made a whole video about how to reduce inflammation naturally, so I suggest you check it out next. But I will tell you already that about 38 trillion potential drivers of inflammation are living inside you right now, your microbiome. Your microbiome is super important. It produces molecules like vitamins and short-chain fatty acids, which are crucial for our health. However, if we don't take care of our good microbes, they stop caring about us and in return, bad microbes will take over. Studies found that during aging, the microbiome changes and slowly shifts towards a population that may cause inflammation. Normally your gut cell wall shields you from any potentially harmful microorganisms or potentially harmful molecules produced by those organisms. But the barrier can become permeable or leaky, which causes inflammatory molecules and pathogens to rush into your body. A recent study found that healthy centenarians appear to have a much lower intestinal permeability compared to unhealthy young adults. In fact, they are on the same level with healthy adults. So I guess it's fair to say that keeping your microbiome healthy and your gut cell wall tight is a worthwhile path to longevity. But how do we do this? Well, the microbiome science is complicated and even after years of research, I'm reluctant to say that eating this or that will guarantee you a healthier microbiome. But I can say this much. Try to avoid processed food most of the time. They are loaded with sugar, artificial sweeteners and processed oils. All things that have been shown to be bad for the gut. On the other hand, try to get some fiber into your diet, mostly in form of fruits and vegetables. Get your meat and fish from free living animals and maybe include some fermented food every now and then. Sugar is not only bad for your microbiome, high glucose and especially high insulin levels are also associated with accelerated epigenetic aging. Constantly high blood glucose levels will also lead to glycation reactions with proteins, which cause the formation of so-called advanced glycation end products, which have been linked to diseases such as diabetes, Alzheimer's, atherosclerosis and Parkinson's, as well as physiological aging. You can get an idea of your glycation levels with a standard blood test that measures glycated hemoglobin, or HbA1c. So coming back to the longevity effects we saw with the ketogenic diet, it may be partially because the ketogenic diet doesn't include processed carbs or sugar. Okay, the next tip on the list on how to slow aging naturally is to make sure that you get your micronutrients. Vitamin and mineral deficiencies are associated with many diseases and may accelerate aging. For instance, being deficient in vitamin E, C or beta carotenes increases the risk for Alzheimer's significantly. Being deficient in vitamin D increases the risk for falls and fractures and being deficient in magnesium can cause muscle weakness. I think you get the point. Eating a balanced diet will be sufficient to prevent most micronutrient deficiencies. If you want to be sure, do it like I did it and go ahead and spend half a day creating Excel sheets where you add the food you normally eat and write down their micronutrient contents. Okay, but it is also important that you don't stress yourself out too much and that you don't lose sleep over your diet choices. Reducing stress and getting enough sleep are both important factors for longevity. Okay, but unlike chronic stress, 
acute but short-term stress can actually be beneficial. Exercise and fasting are after all a stress for the body and the brain. And as Professor Mark Madsen explains it in his TED talk, Fasting is a challenge to your brain. And your brain responds to that challenge of not having food by activating adaptive stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and resist disease. Other stressors that have been shown to increase longevity by boosting the expression of longevity genes are cold and heat exposure. To give you an example, people who frequently use a sauna had a significantly reduced risk for sudden cardiac death and all-cause mortality. Sauna use and other stressors activate heat shock proteins, which make sure that all proteins in the cell are folded correctly and function correctly. Okay, these are the 8 ways on how to slow down aging naturally. If this video gets 500 likes, I will make a video about supplements that potentially increase longevity. It's a controversial topic, but I will do my best to present the research in an unbiased way. Thank you for watching.